now live in the tower. Uh, today, what we're going to do is slightly contrived. I will admit that right up front. Um, we are using uh, a build in the development environment. Obviously, uh, it is not October 1st. So we're showing you the game in the environment where we are testing the game right now. And if you are playing Solstice of Heroes, and if you're acquiring your fabulous dress uniforms, uh, you may know that the armor that you are acquiring uh, and adding glow to uh, will become Armor 2.0 on October 1st with our fall releases. So let's take a look at these three players, fully dressed in the Solstice of Heroes gear sets. And let's pretend that it is this fall uh, these players have been playing Destiny, they've been earning the mods, they've been earning the materials that they need to upgrade those mods, and let's step through that process. Uh, Rodney, what's the first step in taking Solstice of Heroes armor and turning it into Armor 2.0? Yeah, uh, so if you earned the Legendary set, uh, you can, once uh, Shadowkeep drops, you'll be able to come over here, talk to our friendly neighborhood gunsmith, and... So Gunsmith is going to have an upgrade package for you that you'll be able to grab. And when you do, Bam. you're going to get your full Armor 2.0 set of Solstice gear. So, crack that open. Let's take a look. Yeah. So, at a glance, uh, talk to us about what are some of the first changes that we can observe, even at this level of the character inspection screen, uh, for Armor 2.0. Sure. Yeah, so uh, one of the first things you'll notice is that uh, with the introduction of Armor 2.0, we're also reintroducing Intelligence, Discipline, and Strength, the three stats from uh, the first Destiny game that will now sit alongside Mobility, Resilience, and uh, Recovery, from the stats from Destiny 2. Uh, and those stats now, instead of scaling from uh, 1 to 10, will actually scale from 0 up to 100. Uh, and if you tooltip over them, you can see we've added some information about what each of these stats does and shows you where you're at on that uh, 0 to 100 scale. So for example, mobility, one of the things it does is it increases your base speed. And each of the, uh, each of the stats has breakpoints at every 10 points of stats, so 10, 20, 30. And once you cross that breakpoint, cross that threshold, you enter a new tier. And so once you're in a tier, that's when you gain the benefits of that, the, the increased benefits of that tier. So for example, right now you can see mobility for my character. I've got uh, 30 mobility that puts me at tier three, which gives me the 12% base speed, speed increase. And you can see resilience is giving you extra shield capacity. Recovery helps you recover more quickly from uh, when you get damaged. Your discipline is going to govern your grenade recharge uh, rate, so the higher your discipline, the faster your grenade will recharge. Your intellect will increase your super ability, or decrease your super ability cooldown time, and your strength will decrease your melee ability cooldown time. So basically, these six stats are the first thing that you'll notice uh, on the, the character mm -hmm. screen. And you're getting these stats from the armor itself. So each set of armor is gonna have some number of points in each of the uh, six stats. And they all combine together to give you your total. Uh, and of course the class uh, item doesn't have any stats on it. But these basically will combine together to give you your total. And so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be uh, collecting armor, finding the right combination of stats for the build that you want to make, uh, and then you know, putting those pieces together to help create your, your particular build. Cool. Great introductory summary. I hope people collected uh all of that detail, because I can tell you that right now in chat, I'm um, seeing people uh, observing the fact that uh, my ghost is over my shoulder <laughs> and my sparrow is right behind me. So yes, you can uh, you can observe your ride and how well it pairs with your armor. Uh, you know, we're investing a lot more in uh, you know your personal vanity, yeah. your personal creative expression of what your hero is. So yeah, you can see your ghost, you can see your vehicle, you can see all of your armor and how it pairs well together into the ultimate fighting style. And uh, yes, confirmed, Glimmer Cap has been raised to two hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> yes. So there's uh, a lot to love. Uh, you know, our, our user interface team has thrown uh, a lot of love at this screen, and uh, there's a lot of things that people can can pick through and and enjoy about. Uh, you know, the, the hero that they are nurturing. So um, why don't you take us through the process? Uh, we want you to build uh, a Titan that is ideal for you. Right. Uh, we will see one way to build a Titan, and of course there will be many, many permutations. Things that we are talking about today, 
uh, Venom in our mixer chat said, I hope this reveal is not too revealing. And that's always kind of the game. That's the double-edged sword. Uh, we want to give you some excitement about what awaits you this fall, but we also want to make sure that there are some things that you get to experience for the first time in the game. So we're gonna show you some of the building blocks. We're gonna show you the process that you can use to pair those together to invent new fighting styles for yourself. Uh, we are not going to be talking too much about finishing moves or the artifact or the additional perks in there. We're going to take a look at armor customization today. That's the theme for this stream. And I'll be calling out some other moments in the very near future where we'll be elaborating on some of these topics. Enough from me. Let's go back to you. Let's sure. go to your workbench and let's see uh, how your Titan is going to live and breathe and fight. Yeah, so you know, one of the things you said was that we're trying to focus more on letting you make the decisions to build your character the way you want to look and the way you want to play, right? And so everyone's going to have a different method of deciding like what is the right thing for them to do to, to make their character. So for me, I like to start with a, a pretty straightforward concept of like how do I want to play in the fire team with these, with these other two. So I want to play a support character. Like that's, that's why I play. I like play healers and defenders and people that basically buff up my allies. So I've decided that what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a support character. I'm going to play a uh, Titan using Ward of Dawn as my super. Okay. Uh, I've picked Lumina as my exotic uh, hand cannon. And then I also have uh, Tatara Gaze and an Avalanche so that basically I'm covering all three of my damage types mm -hmm. uh, there. Uh, and so since I'm going to be using these weapons and I'm going to be building uh, a support character, I'm going to really focus on uh, trying to keep my melee up uh, pretty often so I can give out overshields to people. I want to keep my class ability up because I'm also going to use the Crest of Alpha Lupi here. Okay. Uh, and so uh, that's the, the sort of core that I'm going to be building around. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick my mods uh, based around that. So, so we just saw you acquire your uh, Solstice of... Hero's armor yeah. from the gunsmith. How does one acquire uh, an exotic 2.0? Sure. So exotic items are all converted over to armor 2.0, so that when they drop in the world, they will be armor 2.0ified. Yeah, that's a word, by the way. <laughs> uh, but also, you we got in and we've changed over all of the exotics in your collections, so that if you've already collected a particular exotic, you'll be able to pull it out of your collections as an armor 2.0 piece. Cool. It'll have a fixed role, uh, so you'll still want to go out there and, and find uh, drops that have you know a different role that suit your character, yes. but you'll be able to get a version of it out of your collections. So on October 1st, my, my stag, my helmet, yes. my coat rack, my beloved coat rack helmet <laughs> uh, will be in, waiting for yes. me in collections as uh, stag 2.0. That is correct, yes. Wonderful. Yeah. So now that I've sort of got my basic theme and I've picked out my exotics, I'm going to go in and I'm going to start modifying my gear. And so one of the first things you'll notice is that uh, the randomized perks are gone and instead have been replaced by armor energy and armor mods. So we have three mod sockets down below and we have energy up on the top. And so just to talk about that a little bit, basically each uh, type of armor will have a, uh, an energy type and an energy amount. Mm -hmm. This number goes from okay. 1 to 10, uh, and this number can be upgraded. So uh, basically, the energy amount tells you how many mods of which uh, energy cost can be socketed in. So just a quick look down here, we can see that, uh, for example, the Paragon mod costs four energy. The Void Resistance mod costs one Void energy. So Void mods can only be socketed into Void armors. Mm -hmm. Anything that requires any energy can be go into any armor piece. You have a budget to spend now. Yeah, exactly. So, But your budget uh, is not maximized there. You it have is not five yet. out of 10. Yes, and so what I'm going to do is just to sort of show you how this works. Basically, I know that I'm going to be using uh, my sniper rifle a lot uh, because I want to get uh, I want to get you know that super energy because I'm going to socket in another mod from that. So basically, when I go down here, I can look at my mods. I can see some of them are grayed out. That means I don't have enough energy to socket those in. If I move my cursor over it, you can see that the energy bars start to fill up and flash up there saying, hey, this is how much energy this mod is going to consume. Yeah. If I move my cursor over one of the mods that, doesn't, that I don't have enough energy for, you can see it turns red and it shows me, hey, there's one energy bar there that we still need to be able to socket this in. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure I've got this enhanced sniper rifle targeting because I don't want to look bad on the stream when I miss a headshot. So no one wants to. Going to go bad ahead and stream. upgrade here, and so now I've upgraded a few, and I've got enough energy for it, so I can go ahead and 
socket this in. So now I've got enhanced sniper rifle targeting right there oh, waiting so on me. And it's also worth noting, that mod didn't go away. Right. Uh -huh. uh, unlocks are the future. Yes, all armor mods are unlocked. So once you've acquired it once, it is then unlocked forever. It can be socketed into as many pieces of armor as you want, unsocketed, whatever, mm -hmm. like, however you want to do it. Uh, we thought this was important because we want you to experiment with your mods and experiment with your builds sure. and be able to swap things out. Uh, so basically, once you've got it, you've got it forever. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and then... Um, as you uh, unlock these different masterwork tiers, we can see that there are some new materials. There yep. are some new economies in play here. We've seen, uh, you know, the, the uh, look at this, ascendant shards. Yes. Yeah, so we do have some new materials that are going to be required to upgrade these that will be available from various reward sites throughout the game. Uh, and then once you finally upgrade your armor to its top tier, one of the things you'll be able to notice uh, it's a little difficult to see right now. Here, let me move. There we go. Is that uh, each of my stat bars uh, shows an increase there? You can see the green on the side of the stat bars. Yeah. That's because when you upgrade an armor to its full masterwork level, uh, it actually gives you plus two to every stat all the way down the okay. down the line. So basically, that's the the benefit you get in addition to being able to put in more mods into your armor. Sure. Now the uh, topic of enhancement cores, masterwork cores. You know, acquiring these things has been a very loud topic of conversation mm -hmm. in our community. You know, dismantle something in your inventory and cross your fingers or complete a bounty have been some of your best paths mm -hmm. to earning those things. Uh, I'm told, and, and I'd like for you to confirm for me again, there are multiple different sources for these materials. So if you find yourself wanting, if you find yourself going and doing way too biz much business with the spider, mm -hmm. um, we have new pathways that you can yep. travel to earn those things. Yeah, there's gonna be new ways to get them, and there's also going to be uh, ways that you you can sort of upgrade into the more advanced uh, sure. uh, advanced materials as well. So, uh, yeah, we hope that it's going to be uh, a, a a process where you sort of see, okay, here's what I need to do to get the things that I need to upgrade my armor. Yeah. And we'll be talking about this a little bit more, actually, uh, when we are in Germany for Gamescom. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about how the Nightfall will play a role in your acquisition of these materials. Uh, and then later on, we'll talk about seasonal progression being a way that you can acquire these materials. But we do not want this to be a famine. We want you to get out and play Destiny and earn the things that you need so that you can have fun building your character and customizing it so it's really an extension of the way you like to play. But anyway, uh, <laughs> while I tried to diffuse the controversy along the way, <laughs> please continue down the path sure. and uh, show us what you yeah. got. So uh, I've already got my enhanced sniper rifle targeting in, and now I want to go ahead and make sure I've got plenty of ammo for this. So one of the things we've done is we've broken out the ammo finders into uh, specific weapon ammo finders. So I'm going to be going in here and getting my sniper rifle ammo finder. Uh, we've also made sure that the ammo finders, uh, they not only work a little bit more reliably, but they also show you that they are working a little bit more visibly. And uh, hopefully when we get into the actual gameplay, we'll be able to show off exactly what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and socket that in. So I've got one leftover energy. Uh, I've got one open socket over here. So you can see that, hey, I've, a lot of these are grayed out, but I've got some choices done here. I can get void resistance, minor resist, or major resist. I think for this one, I'm gonna put in major resist, mm -hmm. just cause I'm not, I ain't scared of no miners. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, so that's my helmet. And so now I'm gonna go over here and start working on my gauntlets. Mm -hmm. So let's see here, I think, uh, I'm going to be using my Lumina a lot to buff people, so I think, and that's probably my primary, so I think I'm going to go with Enhanced Hand Cannon Loader, put in there. I need to upgrade my armor a little bit here, so that I can get my full energy amounts there, get my full masterwork. Uh, let's see here, I could also do Sniper Rifle Loader. Uh, I'm not going to be using my grenade that much, so I don't think that one's going to benefit me too much. Um, I don't have anything for my machine gun right now, so I think actually what I'm going to do is go with my large weapon loader here so that I've got something for my machine gun. So my hand cannon and my machine gun, I'm going to have a pretty good reload rate. Uh, I've used up all my energy, so nothing in my general socket for this one. Yeah. 
It's right. interesting how you're letting people really double down on the things that are important to them with some expensive mods, but yeah. if you want to diversify a little oh, bit more, you can pick some of the cheaper options and yeah. have different skills across the spectrum. And it's worth noting in this particular one right here, I picked an enhanced mod and then I picked a broadly useful mods, and those are those are pretty expensive. If I instead was to pick something more specific, like you know my sniper rifle loader, sniper rifle loader, it's a little bit more on the expensive side because there are both uh, special and heavy sniper rifles and also the reload time on a sniper rifle sniper rifle is really really important uh, but like you know if, if I was just using regular hand cannon loader I would be able to afford more mods so basically you kind of have to make a choice about how important it is to you and it could be that you know based on the perks that you have on your particular hand cannon that reloader mod isn't as important to you right so like you really it's gonna be about weighing like what perks I have on my weapons what perks do I need on my armor to live that that gameplay style that mm -hmm. I'm that I'm aiming at Mm -hmm. All right, so now I'm going to go in and start. I oh, don't have much energy on my crest here, so I'm going to go ahead and crank this up. While you do that, uh, Miss Noodle in our uh, Twitch chat is asking, uh, do we have to acquire these mods before we can use them? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And how? Where will these mods be found? How, yep. can, how can players expect to be acquiring these? Yeah, so the mods will actually drop from... Uh, uh, about three different sources. Uh, you'll be able to get them from the gunsmith. Uh, he will both sell mods on a rotating basis, so basically they'll rotate through and you can just buy them from him. Yep. Uh, you can also get them from gunsmith packages. So like if you get the gunsmith Ingram, sometimes it will include a mod. Okay. Uh, you'll also be able to get them from just world Ingrams and then also uh, some of the mods, like the enhanced mods, will come from Ingrams that you'll get uh, from Iron Banner and the Raid and other Pinnacle sources. So basically, like there's, they're they're grouped into big chunks there. So they, that's why you'll be able to go get them. Yeah, yeah. A lot less guesswork. People yeah. know what to do. People know where to go. Uh, all right. So because I'm going to be using a sniper rifle, I want to make sure I've got plenty of reserves there. And I think also in this case, I want make sure that I am not getting flinched as well. So I think again, I'm gonna go, I'm using a lot of enhanced perks because I think that I need all the help that I can get. So that's eating up a lot of my budget. But again, I got one left over here. So I think another major resist to just double down. Uh, and that is my chest piece. Now when we start getting into the boots. the boots here, I definitely have to make sure that I'm picking up plenty of sniper rifle ammo. So I'll grab my sniper rifle scavenger uh, and I think also I need more energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, might want to do that. So it seems like there are some themes to the types of impact that different types of gear have on your build, right? Yeah. Like. Uh, it looks like the, the boots here really indicate what sort of ammo you're acquiring. Yes, yes, absolutely. So one of the things we do is we make sure that basically for the uh, the sockets that are armor piece specific, like these are the leg armor mods, there are certain mechanics that are only found in there. So all of the scavenger mods are down here as well. Plus like traction is on the, the boots. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at like the, the chest, basically that's where the capacity and the unflinching ones are, uh, mods are. And this is similar to how things are distributed in the, the perks right now and the random armor in the game right now. Uh, but we've just sort of doubled down on making it so that they have a very clear like, hey, these are boot mods, these are chest mods, etc. The one thing that is nice though is that because these two slots are the, they're both just leg armor slots. You can have a scavenger mod and a scavenger mod where you couldn't have that before, right? Mm -hmm. You couldn't have two scavenger mods. You couldn't have two uh, unflinching mods, right? Like if I wanted to, I could have unflinching sniper rifle and you know unflinching hand cannon if I wanted to, right? Uh, and so like you have a little bit more flexibility in how you, you like what kinds of mechanics you have access to at any given time. Uh, so I'm going to keep going here, Sniper Rebel Scavenger, and I think Traction. And that leaves me with four left over. Ooh. So since I've got four left over, I think what I actually want to do is uh, I'm going to use, I'm not going to use all my energy, but I'll increase my strength because I'm going to be want to give, I'm going to want to give over shields to these guys. So I want to make sure I keep my melee up pretty often. Okay. So now getting down here into my last piece, my class item, this is where I want to make sure that I put in my remote connection. This is how I'm going to get my super energy in order to cast Ward of Dawn. So I want to make sure I'm getting lots of sniper rifle kills. I've already invested a lot into my sniper rifle perks so far. Uh, and then I think 
Yeah, I'm going to be using my class ability a fair amount because I've got the Crest of Alpha Lupi. So I'm going to go ahead and put Perpetuation in. And this is going to leave me with quite a bit of energy left over. So I think what I'm going to do is with this five left over, I'm going to go ahead and put in Intellect Mod to get my Super coming back faster. So majestic. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now I have put in a full suite of mods on all of my armor. Mm -hmm. And one of the things people can see is that the mods that I've socketed in, it has put those uh, uh, those tooltips uh, down there. The uh, UI team did a great job of coming in and making sure that the tooltips reflect the changes in Armor 2.0. You can see an Armor's energy type, its energy amount, you can see its stats, you can see the fact that it has fully masterwork stats. Uh, it was I, I didn't call it out, but one of the things you might have noticed oh, is that the intellect mod, uh, well, you won't be able to see it on this one actually, but let me go back to the legs, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, so the, the strength mod here, when I move my cursor over it, the stat bars actually change so I can see like, hey, this is gonna add to the strength of this item. So it adds it in and you see the strength bar actually goes up. So yep. you can see exactly what your strength has gone up to because I had that mod in there. Yeah, you get a nice preview for, yeah. your, for your mod shopping needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now I've got all my mechanics in place, but I think the last and, and occasionally most important uh, part of this is I gotta, I gotta make myself look pretty. Come on, yeah, I, let's go. I can't not, can't not play the fashion game a little bit. Yep. So uh, I, li I like my Solstice gear for the most part, but I think I wanna change out this headpiece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go into my ornaments and I'm gonna find, oh, my. oh yeah. Yeah, this is the one. So right these here. are the universal ornaments that we gave sort of just a conversational textual preview of in a previous conversation. And I mean, this is a huge shift for us. Mm -hmm. It is. Playing the tactical game, building the perfect tactical guardian meant that your style choices took a back seat. You could apply some shaders and try to get yourself closer to how you want to look. But now when you look at a guardian, at a glance, you're not necessarily going to know how they fight. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, one of the things we don't do is we don't overwrite the exotics, right? So you're yep. always going to be able to recognize the exotic that someone's wearing. Uh, but yeah, you'll be able to, to change your appearance. And we felt like that it's important because like people want to you know play the way they want to play. They want to look the way they want to look, the look. And I, I feel like they should be able to do both of those things without a lot of friction. So we're starting this off. Uh, this, this is again, this the first steps. Uh, in that direction, but we're starting it off with the universal ornaments, which uh, you can see I put on my my fancy big horn helmet here, yeah. uh, and like this this looks okay, right? But uh, that blue and that gold clash, I think I got to start I got to start applying some yeah, shaders no good. here. Right? No good. Some shader yeah. action. Yep. Yeah, and I I'm a big fan of this new age black armor. Is that your the, favorite too? The, well, it's one of them. It's it it looks so darn good on this solstice set, and. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna oh, go ahead that. and look oh. at that. That Lovely red and that gold, gold is just... And the alpha loop by gold trim goes with yeah, it. Yeah. Very stylish, <laughs> very fashionable. Listen, I may have made some choices based on cosmetics here. <laughs> All right. This and is dressed in the in full indeed. effect, says True. Geek Girl. Yeah, absolutely correct. And yeah. now the other thing I like about this, the Solstice one here is that, uh, oh, I don't have any armor glows, oh well. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with this right here. So yeah, that is my, look at that. Mm. Right? Beautiful, magnificent nice. titan there. Now, if you have achieved the glow in Solstice of Heroes, yes. we don't have that in this development build, but we do want to call out that you would be able to apply that glow uh, to this Guardian. Ooh, to so this. those are things that you get to bring forward with you into the third year of Destiny 2. Mm -hmm. You get to be as fabulous as your heart desires. Look so at that. fabulous. Look at that majesty. Mm -hmm. So majestic. Very beautiful. All right, thank you. Anything else to say about your Titan? Nah, I'm good. You're ready to go. All I right, so we're going to be uh, hand-picking a strike that we're going to play once yes. all of our Guardians are sorted. Uh, Lisa and Tomo have been doing a little bit of the busy work behind the scenes, some of the master working and upgrading. So uh, now we can just get to building. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa? Yeah.